Um, our model of the world, <laughs> this is what we have always found, is that this thing that we're going to define as energy is conserved and, and for us, for physicists, conserved means that the total energy in this universe does not change. If one energy goes up, if the energy in that bowling ball, the thermal energy in that bowling ball went up, it went up because another energy in the universe, the thermal energy in my hand, went down. My hand got cooler, I can feel that get cooler, the bowling ball got warmer. If one energy goes up, some other energy or set of energies somewhere must have gone down and they happened because there was some interaction that transferred energy. That is the big picture that we are, that we, uh, are working with. And so I'll, t I'll talk about all these other things in a second. Let me just say, oh, I better talk about it now. Um, if you have a closed physical system, closed we're going to define as one that doesn't interact with its environment, or at least doesn't transfer significant energy to or from the environment. The, any transfers that happen are negligible. They don't have to be zero, they just have to be something we get to ignore. If a system is closed, then its total energy E does not change. The final energy is the same as the initial energy because it's closed, because no energy was transferred. Is this bowling ball an open system or a closed system? Right now, sitting there. What would you call it? Is energy being transferred to it? from the environment that isn't negligible. <laughs> Do we get to neglect the energy transfers? Because the air does transfer a little heat to it and then it transfers it back and it's as slight, very, very, very tiny fluctuations in its total energy. You absolutely get to neglect it. In this interaction, should it be treated as a closed system? No, I reached out and I did something and now it has more energy and there's nothing, you, you can't neglect the energy, especially if I do this, I can't neglect the energy that, I'm not going to do that. Um, I can't neglect the energy that it has. So you would have to treat the physical system of the bowling ball as an open system for an open system, we use dotted lines to represent uh, that energy can be transferred in or out. For a closed system, we draw a solid line around it representing that the total energy does not change. The final energy is the same as the initial energy, so when I subtract the two, I end up with zero. For an open system, delta E can change because two kinds of energy transfers we're going to name. Heat is an energy transfer, and work is another energy transfer. I showed you both of these with the bowling ball. When I, when heat is when something hot is in contact with something cold, and energy flows at a microscopic level, because the atoms in my hand hit the atoms in the bowling ball, and start the atoms in the bowling ball moving faster. Heat transferred atom to atom in a microscopic way, is, is the heat is the name for that energy transfer from something at a high temperature, my hands, to something at a low temperature, the bowling ball. Any other energy transfer that's not because the temperatures are different, but is for some other reason, is called work. So that didn't happen because my hand was hot. 
I could take an ice cube, push it against that, it would still cause it to move that way. That energy, that transfer of energy is called work. It did not happen because of a temperature difference. It happened for some other reason. Any tra energy transfer that's not because of a temperature difference is called work. And I'll, you'll, we'll see at the end of the quarter that there are reasons for that. Heat transfers cause the entropy of an object to change. Work energy transfers do not necessarily cause the entropy of an object to change. So the difference between those two are differences that we have to worry about later when we're talking about entropy. Right now, they, they look, you know, they're just two kinds of energy transfers. <coughs> Is it possible to talk about that right there as, a prob as an energy interaction problem with a closed system? Can I pick a physical system so that this interaction right there is closed? No energy transfer from outside the physical system. Is it possible to do that? I see a yes. How many think it's possible? How many think it isn't? Just curious. M a lot more. I didn't see anyone who thinks that it isn't, so now you think it is. H how would I do that? What's the physical system I'd need to choose? I could choose the room. I don't have to be quite that all-encompassing because that interaction is mostly between the ball and me. So actually if I just chose the ball and me, that would take up most of the results of the interaction. I gave the ball this extra energy which means I lost it. So I had to burn some sugar in order to be able to do that to the ball. The ball gains energy. I lose a little bit of bond energy, and, but the two of us together didn't lose or gain much energy with the rest of the room. So you don't have to become all-encompassing just for that one, but the idea is right. The way you turn a problem that seems like an open system, because that suddenly gained energy from somewhere, into a closed system is by including more things. Include the environment. Include other stuff. Eventually you'll include enough stuff that it becomes closed, basically. Negl uh, closed for all, uh, except for negligible energy transfers somewhere else. I mean, there's almost always something, but it doesn't have to be important. Any questions? I'm going to uh, ask you a few questions that let you think about some of these things. Here's one about ATP. Transformation of ATP into ADP in water, you all know about that, so I don't have to tell you about it. You know more about it than I know about it. The first step in this process, eh, you know, you, trans you, you change, you, you go through a chemical reaction, things have to break and get remade, and there's all sorts of things that go on in a chemical reaction microscopically. I want to talk about the first step in this particular process uh, of, of breaking up ATP. Uh, the first thing that has to happen is that some chunk of, of the ATP, uh, 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 one of the phosphate sections, breaks off. Suppose there wasn't any water around and, and you just had an ATP molecule floating around in outer space with nothing else around it in any, any way. My question for you, we're going to break it into two pieces, by the way, at that bond. Did I have to add energy to break the bond? Or did energy get released as the bond broke? So we have ATP in outer space. Did we have to add energy to break off a phosphate piece? Or do we get energy out? Uh, energy was added, energy was released. Or is it something funny like in between? I had to add energy to start the bond breaking and it gets released as it finished, or none of the above? <coughs> 